Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Everybody good? Come on, man. I need some energy because I feed off the energy. How's everybody doing this morning? Everybody all right? Good, 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 good. I'm glad to be here because, you know, this is my old stomping grounds class of two step, you know, up there. Uh, anyhow, but, um, yeah, so I'm going to be here and we go, me and, and, and Miss Martha here, we're going to talk to you a little bit about Ferrum and things that we have to offer. Uh, so we're going to go over, um, I'm going to go over our info session for you so we can tell you different ways uh, that Ferrum can be affordable for you, but what makes Ferrum great. Um, and, and I like to say that what makes Ferrum great is because, you know, I am somebody who was is from Franklin County, but also somebody who took my talents down the road to Ferrum College. And um, I think I have been very successful uh, in the education that I got provided by Ferrum College in, in my career choice. So um, definitely want to tell you about the greatest not so little secret that we have in our own backyard. Uh, first of all, I'm Justin uh, Muse, graduate of Franklin County High School. Uh, I've been at Ferrum since 2000 uh, as a student and then uh, started working there in 2007. I started off working in uh, student activities as the assistant director and worked my way up to uh, the director of student activities uh, for over uh, 15 years, 15, 16, it all runs together um, there. And so I like to say I was in charge of putting the fun into Ferrum. Um, and then- That was my job, that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, and then I came and took over, right? Yeah, <laughs> and then um, just this past year, I got another opportunity to come on this side of the house in admissions to uh, talk with uh, uh, students just like you and tell you uh, about my story, but about Ferrum and encourage you all coming to, uh, to come to Ferrum. So right now, uh, I'm the Associate Director of Recruiting and Outreach at Ferrum College. So without further ado, let's uh, talk about Ferrum College. College, which I guess our motto, not our school motto, but for um, our uh, motto uh, for the new, uh, what I want to say, enter, enter with promise, lead with purpose. So we want you to come here with a promise that you want to uh, do some things in your career, whatever that promise is, and we want you to lead with purpose because we want to give you the tools that you need to succeed. All right, so if Aram, this is just a few um, stats about who we are. You know, we are a small institution with less than 800 students on campus, so it, it's a big difference transitioning from uh, Franklin County High School where y'all have what, about, about 2,000 students here, give or take, you know, to like 800 students. But the good thing about that is, you know, the small class sizes, which is 18, which looks about, you know, what you all have here, but the smaller class sizes and, um, the 13 to 1, or it should be on there somewhere, a student to faculty ratio. So with that, you definitely get that one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on approach feel. So you're not going to be a number, you're going to be a person. And what I like to tell people, with that small 13 to 1 ratio, uh, we're going to have professors like Ms. Martha here and others, they're going to throw you out there in the fire. And they're going to they go throw you to the wolves, but at the same time, they're going to give you the tools that you need to succeed and they're also going to work with you through that. And that's that hands-on experience, that valuable hands-on experience that is real, uh, that we really uh, uh, like to get our students to really take charge of. Um, <coughs> We do have uh, clubs, several different clubs and organizations. Uh, I actually have less than that right now. Uh, at one point, uh, uh, pre-COVID, we had 60 plus. Now, we're kind of rebuilding right now. And some of those clubs and organizations that, were, that we had established are not coming back because, you know, things have changed and, and students have changed. And that's fine. Uh, so it's like a rebuild. Um, we look for people with at least a 2.5 GPA, and if it's anything lower, I mean, it's a case-by-case -case basis, but uh, the average student in um, the 22-23 class came in with a 3.17. That was the average GPA uh, for the class this past year. Um, 
We do have over 40 majors and minors, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. 99% uh, of our students receive financial aid, which we're giving away $21 million in aid. And this is just school aid, not counting uh, like your fast for anything like that, that we give out to our students. And we are a residential campus, as we have 89% of our students that do live on campus. So if you're ready, everybody's a senior, right? This is a senior class. So if you're ready to apply, our application is live uh, right now. So you can uh, go online and apply. Uh, we are a test optional school, and we don't have a fee for our application. So you can definitely go on and apply for, fee, for free um, there. Uh, you don't have to worry about your SATs or the ACTs, because like I said, we are test optional. However, if you want to be part of the Boone's Honors Program, program, um, you will need to have your SAT or your ACT. And, we, we know it's, it's, and that's a program that you have to apply to get in. So it's a 1,200 on the SAT or 25 on your ACT. And you got to have three five or greater just to apply for that program. And if you have taken your SATs, um, and you still can send them into the office, we still would take those. So please send those if you already taken them. All right, so in the areas of study, we have, like I said, over 40 different majors and minors here on campus. We actually, over, uh, I guess, the past several weeks, have upgraded some things, such as, I know journalism is listed as a minor here, but we actually have that as a major now. Um, and there's uh, other ones on there that has actually kind of upgraded uh, to major status. So we're definitely looking at adding more and then kind of changing things, depending on, you know, what, what the interests are. With journalism, it wasn't, uh, I don't think it was as big of a emphasis area at one point uh, but we did have a strong nucleus and uh, just recently within the past two or three years we had our um uh, newspaper, The Iron Blade, um, that has won like several different uh, high-ranking awards. And we had some of the members, which some of the members of The Iron Blade are from Franklin County as well, who uh, got published in not only the, uh, the Franklin County, the Franklin, what is it, the Franklin News Post, but also the Roanoke Times and other uh, regional newspapers. So that's awesome to have somebody from, you know, little old farm in our own backyard yard doing different things to get published in like a regional newspaper such as the Roanoke Times. Uh, so these are just the idea and we're going to some more specifics a little bit later here. Um, we are part of Division 3, NCAA Division 3 Athletics. We are part of the historic Old Dominion Athletic Conference. So uh, we are the Panthers. So y'all, you know, leave Franklin County and come to Farham College and y'all always going to be in Franklin County like LC. Me, I was asleep this morning. <laughs> so, you know, you leave from being an Eagle to uh, becoming a Panther. So we do have over 25 different athletic uh, sports there on campus between male and female uh, athletics. So we have something for you. We see several athletes in here today. Uh, we got any track stars? Because I know we all looking for some track. Any track stars? Okay, you know, we all looking for some track stars. We just got a track program, I think, two. This is our second or third year. So, um, and, and, and track and, and and we have produced some uh, top talent so far that's been placing not only within the conference but past the conference so nationally so yeah we don't even have a track yet so you know that just shows what what we're doing all right now in, in terms of the clubs and organizations uh, like I said we do have several different clubs and organizations on campus and we have something that can tickle your fancy something that you can find that you can get involved with and we have different clubs and organizations from like academic clubs honor society, uh, social organizations, student government, if you want to get involved with the uh, student legislation, campus ministries, Greek life, campus media like the Iron Blade and the radio station, uh, TV production, the performing arts group, Norton Outdoor Adventures for those who like to get out in the wild, do the hiking, biking, whitewater rafting. We got any folks like that, like do stuff like that. So, you know, we have that, Norton Outdoor Adventures. Uh, you know how I swim? 
Okay, I don't. I went white water raft and I almost drowned. But anyhow, uh, the equestrian club and then marching band. And that's another key point that we're looking at with the marching band too. So if we have anybody who's interested in the marching band, we are uh, working on rebuilding our marching band as well. But uh, within the student clubs and organizations and activities, uh, we, we have several different activities going on uh, throughout the week. Uh, one of the main responsibilities that I had for the past 15 years is providing programs outside of the classroom to keep people entertained. And so what do we do? You know, it's several different things that we did from concerts to uh, singer-songwriters to um, comedians to uh, just uh, spring fling festivals that we have on campus to one of our biggest programs that we do have on campus is bingo, uh, believe it or not, where we, we, we pack out the Panthers Den uh, with people because they come into, and it's free uh, to play bingo. And part of the reason for the bingo is the prizes that we give away. You know, we give away some laundry detergent, <laughs> we give away some snacks, uh, which, you know, air fryers. Air fryers, like when you get there, it's going to be like, yeah, we need that. But we also give away like TVs, iPads, uh, PS5s, the Oculus goggles. Like we give away several different things. So we, we spend, you know, a, a couple dollars in prizes and we have a bingo once a month. So um, it, it is something that brings people out. Uh, and hopefully some of you all have been to some of the activities that you all could come to <laughs> up there. Yeah. So uh, with that being said, you know, let's talk about, you know, why is Ferrum the best choice for you? Uh, like I said, my, my story is, um, way back when, which is, you know, just a few years ago, like two years ago, uh, when I decided to go to Ferrum, um, I didn't know if that was the choice for me, you know, because like I, I know a lot of, of us during my time wanted to go elsewhere, wanted to go like to the big schools or go away um, because we didn't want to, you know, go to our own back door. But after getting on campus and seeing everything that was there to be offered, you know, many, many types of opportunities are available on campus. And uh, a lot of connections with the people on campus, with people outside of campus, where you can do several different things. You know, during my time at Ferrum, I know we have people who have had the opportunity to work in the government and work at the White House uh, uh, for several different things. I know people who have uh, had the opportunity even to work with Bill Gates at one time under our president, uh, Dr. Bryden, who's worked with Bill Gates and which that Micro, something through Microsoft or whatever, but uh, it was just the connection that she had personally with Bill Gates that led us to the opportunities of having students to um, create, have that opportunity. Um, my personal opportunity, you know, I had the opportunity to go to the happiest place on earth for like six months uh, to hang out with the mouse and his wife uh, at Disney World. And so like, it, that was just a little small opportunity that I found on campus uh, and and like you never would guess that but like with like I said with with the the, the, the faculty and, and the people that we do have on campus there's a lot there's a lot of opportunities outside of campus that they have connections to and that's that's the great thing about Ferrum it also goes back to uh, having those relationships so you have those small classroom sizes or or that 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio so I can easily go up to Miss Martha and I can have a personal relationship with her and, and I can say, you know, I'm looking for whatever it is. And she can t talk to her people and get with my people and we can make something happen or whatever it may be. And so that's one of the beauties about that with being a, a person and not just a number. So uh, one of the key things with college in general, college is expensive. Uh, but I, I just don't want to say it's expensive because it is an investment in not only your education, but in you. So look at this as an opportunity to invest in yourself and what you're going to do with uh, the knowledge and the stuff that you gain once you graduate upon graduation. So at Ferrum, you know, we look at having things being affordable. 
So our, our MO, or we was founded in 1913 by United Methodist Women. And the reason why they, we were founded by United Methodist Women is because they wanted to give people in rural Virginia an opportunity to get education, but have uh, affordable education uh, that people could attain. Because we didn't have like the well-off people in this area uh, at the time. And, and so they want to create a school that would give them that opportunity to um, gain the education so they could do something better with their lives or whatever. And so that's our whole MO. So when you look at Ferrum and you see who who we cater to, we cater to those uh, first generation students. We cater to those students who may not uh, financially be the best, but you know we try to give them opportunities to have that attainable or have an attainable education and get that education. So. Um, Several different dates to remember uh, before we get into like the uh, affordability side is September, the f well, I guess that's already passed. But our application is open for you right now. So you can go ahead and apply on campus. We do have open admissions throughout the year. Uh, of course, the earlier the better, but we do have open admissions. Uh, December 1st, and I have a star by December the 1st, and I don't know if anyone, if y'all heard anything about it or you know, but the FAFSA is getting getting overhauled this year. Typically, uh, October 1 is the day that uh, we, we get people to start to fill out your FAFSA. Um, but since it's being overhauled this year, they moved it back to December, January, really. So we put December the 1st on there. So once again, look for your FAFSA. And then uh, July 31st is the VTAG, which is the Virginia Tuition Assistance Grant application. Um, and that's just free money. That's free money that's out there for you. Um, so if you fill it out before the deadline, you're guaranteed to get that money, whatever it is. If you fill it out, and they still will accept it after the deadline, but the likely you getting it is hit or miss. It all depends on what's left in the kitty, you know, after the deadline. So uh, very important. And normally it's like five thousand dollars. And now da -da 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 -da, talk about that. So we talked about affordability and what uh, you know uh, it is. You know our sticker price. Our sticker price is up there. You know we're around fifty-two thousand dollars, but that's not what uh, the normal person. That's not what people are paying. You know that's just the sticker price. What People are actually paying is anywhere from five to fifteen thousand on average, and 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 it's depending on. And we also have other programs uh, that can alleviate that as well. Uh, of course, with financial aid, so. 100% of our students do receive some sort of financial aid. Uh, like I said, you know, we're, we're a first generation school. We cater to students. We cater to uh, those students to uh, give them financial aid. So the average aid that we had uh, is like $43,000, 43100 So that's what aid you get. So if you do the math, it leaves about five to $15,000, give or take. So uh, we do offer the 21 million million dollars just in school scholarship that 21 million dollars is not touching uh, your fast for anything like that that's what the school is given to students up on you know certain qualifications um, and so like the types of aid that we have is the gift aid and that's um, we have merit scholarships so um, Depending on what your grade point average is, if you stand on campus, we have scholarships that range from 15,000, if you had a 2-0, 15,000, up to like 3-5 plus, $28,000. So that $28,000, once you get it, that's something that you get for your four years there, uh, each year. And the only qualification is you have to remain in good standing, good academic standing. So. Um, that turns out to be, I think it's a hundred and we got any math majors in here? We got any math people? Can y'all do 28 times four, whatever that is? I can't do it in my head. 100, yeah, so $112,000. So, and if you're part of the Boone's Honor Society, you add on 2,000 more to that. So that's $30,000. And so that's, yeah. 120, yeah, 120 thousand uh, dollars in aid that you get for those four years. So that's a significant amount of money. Um, 
We also offer work study programs so you can work while you study. Um, and we have, I think it's like up to $3,000 that you can get. And then also the loans that you qualify for uh, through the FAFSA or private loans outside of, um, you know, outside of the federal loans and stuff like that. So, um, in terms of the FAFSA, um, we don't know too much right now on the new FAFSA. So this is uh, the older information uh, until we get the new information, but uh, we're pretty confident that it'll all pretty much be, this, this, this situation will probably still be the same on some of the qualifications. Uh, so studentaid.gov would be the website that you go to to fill out uh, your FAFSA and then create your FSA ID uh, for that uh, and both the students and the parents would need to do that um, and each year they look for so this past year for the 23-24 they look at the 21 2021 tax data so for next year I guess for 24-25 they will look for the 22 2022 tax data so just to kind of give you an idea about that so just be prepared for those things and and these are just some of the, the different things federal aid monies that are available uh, to students through uh, like the Pell Grant if you uh, uh, qualify for that or which is uh, you can get up to like seventy four hundred dollars just what seventy three ninety five um, federal teaching grant, the, the supplemental education grant, you know, different grants that are available. Uh, the VTAG was what I was telling you, $5,000 per year for four years um, that you get. This past year, actually, it was a little bit more than that. This past year, it was $5,200. So you got $200 more, but, you know, every little bit helps. Um, and then, of course, the institutional aids, like I was saying, with our merit scholarships, um, that the 15 the twenty eight thousand dollars and 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 let me be clear on the fifteen to twenty eight thousand uh, dollars that is for um, residential students now if you're a commuter student it is a little bit less uh, but you don't necessarily it's actually uh, a little bit better in a sense because you don't necessarily have to pay for room and board and stuff like that so for a commuter student it ranges from fourteen thousand to uh, twenty three thousand so um, just you know give you an idea on that um, we also offer need-based grants based on uh, your FAFSA and, and what those, uh, what that is. So um, if you need a little extra or, or anything like that and, and we see that uh, the need is there, then we do have other scholarships that are available. And then, of course, work study. Uh, a lot of students on campus, you know, they're working on campus, but they're doing the work study. So they are working and uh, getting that money to help pay for their education. So uh, that's an opportunity. And then, of course, just other eight programs that we have on campus. The United Methodist program, like I said, we are a Methodist-affiliated uh, institution. Uh, we do offer, uh, we, we are welcome to all religions and uh, backgrounds, but we're founded by United Methodist Women, so we do have uh, programs there, veterans programs, uh, the external scholarships and grants that are available to you, and so much more. So there's definitely several different ways to uh, pay for college. Um, in terms of the loans, several different types of loans that are available, and this is something that's going to come because uh, you can see what you qualify for um, when you fill out the FAFSA. Um, so we have subsidized and unsubsidized loans. So um, if you're a dependent freshman, then you can get up upwards for a fresh up to uh, fifty-five hundred dollars. Uh, in federal loans, um, which is a fixed interest rate um, for the life of the loan. So, and then also the, 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 the private loans, those different things as well. So, um, and if you need more, the, the Parent PLUS loan uh, is available as well. So the parents and can um, get money to help pay uh, for, um, 
uh, your schooling here. So uh, they have, I mean, they do the credit check and they still have to go through the FAFSA and, and all that. They also have uh, a fixed interest loan, fixed interest on their loans as well. So. And that, that does it for me in, in terms of um, like the financial aid and, and my presentation and stuff like that. So if y'all need more help or assistance with the financial pieces of it, you can reach our financial aid department. You can go to our website, faram.edu slash financial aid and see some information on there as well. Do I have any questions? Anybody got questions? Yes. So we don't have boxing. Yeah, we don't. We got wrestling? Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions or anything? Yes. So, I you said it was like 89% of the students live on campus. Um, what, is, what is dorms like compared to other dorms? Like, what is the difference? What are dorms like and what is campus living like? Are you, how many people are you sharing a room with? Okay, so we have several different options on campus. So um, we, we have a traditional dorm, which uh, which is Reddick, which is where we try to get all of our freshmen in, and then we have overflow that goes to other dorms. But uh, for Reddick Hall, it's, it's your normal dorm, so you're sharing the room. With, with, it's, two, it's two of you in a room. Uh, you do have community uh, bathrooms, uh, restrooms in, uh, in the Reddick dorm. Um, we also have a suite style where we have two rooms, which two people in a room uh, share a common bathroom. So we have that type of a dorm. We also have, and these are upper class dorms, uh, apartment style dorms. So uh, in each uh, unit, there's four individual rooms. You share it with four, it's four of you. It's four individual rooms. You have a uh, living room area and a little kitchenette area and two full-size bathrooms uh, in the apartment dorms. Those are the most sought out dorms, those. They also, some of the newer dorms too. Uh, we also have hotel style uh, rooms. So it's just like you going into like a, uh, a double hotel where you have two beds, the bathroom is in each individual room room like a like a hotel um, and then of course we, we do have apartments on campus as well uh, which one bedroom two bedroom apartments so yeah that's it for the dorms mm -hmm. we got a question over there yes um, do you have on campus jobs we do we do um, we have work study jobs and we also have uh, student labor so uh, let me see if I can explain this correctly. Work study jobs uh, is something that you can get through financial aid if it's a financial need. Um, and you got a choice to where the money that you get paid, you can send it to your, which is what most students do, you can put it towards your, um, your balance uh, and help pay for your schooling there, or you can have it come to you. However, if you have a balance and you don't pay it, that falls on you. And then we also have, and those are considered uh, work study jobs, but we also have student labor jobs, which is just a regular job. And most of the student labor jobs are in like uh, the dining hall, or well, our food services areas, some in our physical plant maintenance areas. So, and, and it's just a regular job. I think you get paid a little bit more per hour um, with the, the student labor jobs versus the work study, because the work study, we have to do it by federal regulations, so. Ooh, that's, that's there. Uh, any more questions? Anybody else got any questions or anything? Nothing? Yes? For students that like commute to school, is there like a certain amount of like miles you have to be to be able to commute to school? Yes. And I don't know what that is. I think it's like 60 miles. I think that's right. Yeah, 60. Six. Yes. So, yeah. So, you'll, you'll be good. If you like in this area, you're good. I think 60 will cover all the way up. Is it Lynch? Now, Lynchburg might be a little much. It's a little much. Yes. You said you offer any stuff? Yes, we do have a, a, a media. Uh, 
what's it called? Uh, media TV uh, production. What's it? I don't know the exact name, but yes. The short answer is yes. Um, we actually have a whole house. Yes. We we actually have a whole house dedicated to like the TV production and media, the media house. Yeah. So they do our radio, TV production. They film uh, our games um, that we have on campus and, you know, all kinds of other stuff. And they're expanding. It is a fairly new uh, program. It's something that we've been doing for a while, but I guess it's fairly new having it organized as a major or whatever on campus. Yes. Yes. Is there a campus curfew? Campus curfew? What? Is, uh, no. <laughs> no. No. Campus. <laughs> I, I had to look back to see. <laughs> no, no, we don't have no curfew. Yes. You're you you're your own adult, so we try to we try to treat you like adults on campus. But with that, you know, with with the responsibility, you know, comes the other side of it. If if you, you know do some things that maybe may not be of the best interest you know you do have the consequences to go along with that but uh, it is open we treat you like adults so and we try to keep everyone safe that's our whole mo you know making sure that people are growing and 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 uh becoming young transitioning into young adults anything yes Spanish. Uh-huh. French? I have to look and see. Look and see. Oh, you know, better yet, look look in my uh look in my uh the, my bag. Oh, ouch. Where'd I go? Majors and minors. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Martha, you might be better at this. Gosh, you better make me drunk just watching you do that. Uh, yeah. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> We do have, I know Spanish for sure, we do have a Fulbright Scholar uh, on campus that help work with our Spanish um, majors and help teach a Fulbright Scholar. I don't know where she's from this year, but we have had some from Mexico, has some from, uh, where's the other, uh, Andrew, she came from. Yeah. We have one from Uruguay. Yeah, Uruguay. Scott listed. Spanish. Spanish is all that we've got on the website. Yeah. Right Any other questions? Anything? Okay. Well, all right. I'm going to introduce myself. Okay. That's all right. Yes. You want pick you up. I have a. I'm loud. I still got well, they one of those. To okay. Live in person on Oh gosh. Okay. Okay. Um, my name is Dr. Martha Haley Bowling, and I'm the Dean of Graduate and Professional Studies. So what I do is I am in charge of the teacher education program, the social work program, and our nursing program. I'm also in charge of our graduate program in psychology, teacher education, education specialist, and. Oh gosh, what is it? It just left my head. Athletic coaching. We have a master's degree in athletic coaching. Uh, we're one of the few schools in the state of Virginia that has the master's in athletic coaching. And so um, for my programs that I oversee are all accredited programs, like our nursing program is accredited by the Board of Nursing and we are in the process of getting accreditation through ASIN. Our social work program is accredited through the Council on Social Work Education so that if you were interested in social work, you would come out with a BSW degree instead of a BA or a BS. And then our teacher ed program is accredited and works very closely with the Virginia Department of Education. Um, and so that, that is all that I oversee. Do, are any of you interested in any of those, those fields? Either under, uh, yes, excellent. Excellent, okay, ask me questions, I'll see if I can answer them, and if I can't, I'll make phone calls and I'll get back to you. You can find me at lunch and I'll have answers for you. How's that? Who's first? 
questions? Come on! What is the acceptance rate for the nursing program? This nursing program, I believe, let's look that up, is a 3-2. It's a little higher than some of the other majors because look at what you're going to be doing. I, I don't know that I want my nurse with a 1.8 grade point average. No. Our nurses are in the process of doing clinicals at Franklin Memorial Hospital, Roanoke Memorial Hospital. Um, they're doing clinicals in labor and delivery. They're doing psychiatric clinicals. They're doing med surge. They're doing ICU. Um, we even got the new uh, robotic, uh, gosh, I call them the CPR dummies, but they're to way more than that. They give birth and, and all sorts of stuff that we just got. So we are moving to a very hands-on nursing program. So they got a 60% uh, national rank must be achieved on the uh, mandatory assessment. You have to take the T's test and you have to score at least a 60% or higher on the T's test in order to get into the program. And a 2-5. Hmm? How many people do y'all accept into the nursing program? We accept whoever wants to come into the nursing program. We do not have a cap on any of our majors. So if we could have up to 30 or 40 if we had that many p interest in it. So basically you just go on there and apply for it? And go on and apply. Tell them what you're interested in and you will hear from somebody. And I do have a couple of brochures about the nursing program and I have my business card. If anybody has questions or, or and I would like to get your name and email if you're interested in any of my school programs because then we can reach out to you and kind of walk your way through some things. Yes, sir. So uh, I was looking at the elementary education. Yes. The special ed now. Mm -hmm. How much longer does it take to get the special ed qualification? Now, Fairham right now offers two special ed classes, but we do not have a minor per se in special ed. So, if that is something you wanted to pursue, then we could help you look at look at programs where you could get that extra certification. But we do offer, I think it's at least two special ed classes. Okay. What other questions? Yes, sir. How's the psychology program? Oh, psychology program is great. I'm biased though, because I want you in social work. <laughs> Just being honest. Um, no, but we have a really good psychology program. Um, they are starting to um, have an internship component to it, getting some real world experience. Um, and so, yeah, they do a really good job. It's a good program. We also have the, uh, the five year. We psychology. Five year program for psychology, thank you. Yes. Um, you can get your bachelor's degree in five years and stay an extra year and get your master's. We are looking to provide an online, and this is in the future. This could be ready by the time you were ready, I don't know, of an online counseling site. Can I plug my school, my major, for just a minute? I, I'm really feeling the need since you said psychology. Thank you. So for social work, if that is something that you might be interested in, if you're interested in being a therapist, a child advocate, if you are interested in being a school social worker, working in a hospital, then you can get your degree at, in, at FARM in social work in three years. And then you can get your master's. We have a memorandum of understanding with the University of Pikeville that's totally online. So you could have your master's degree in four years versus five years or six years, depending on which route you want to go. So not only do I teach at FARM and I'm the dean at FARM, I'm also part of a private practice that works with individuals with issues. And so the other thing I can say about FARM is that every job I have ever gotten, I got it because of my education at Farham College. I am a Farham College graduate way before many of you were ever thought of. 
and every job I have ever gotten I can trace it back to it was the skills and the knowledge that I gained at Ferrum. <laughs> And I've done daggone good for myself being a kid from Appomattox who didn't know what in the world she wanted to do but help people. You have got so many opportunities at FARM, so, so many opportunities at FARM that it will make your head spin when you start looking at it. What other questions or comments do you have? I'm going to go back to teacher education for a minute. For teacher education, you are in the classroom working with students from your first intro to, intro to teacher ed class. You will have so many hours that they will put you in different schools throughout the county. So you are getting that hands-on experience from the very first class that you take. So I want you to know about that. And that's very important because I know at most schools you have to wait to your junior, senior year to get inside the classroom. So we're definitely put, getting you inside the classroom sooner versus later, which is, you know, a good thing. And so, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing the things that our, our teacher education program is doing right now. I don't know if you're aware of this, but some of your peers are at Fairham College today um, doing teacher education, uh, Teachers for Tomorrow? Teachers for Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they are on campus today going to workshops and whatnot. And I want to add, I've had several students go through that program, y'all, if you're interested at all. It's a really good one. Mm -hmm. I actually just started teaching this year. Graduated from here a few years back, obviously. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Really supportive, also, and that's really important when you take a school as well. Mm -hmm. Support. Yep. What other questions do you have? Yes, ma'am. How would you go about getting an uh, education degree in agriculture? You would major in education. You would minor in agriculture. And that we have the certification that you can do that okay. because that is a separate certification. So there are some things like um, that you can major back several, back, within the last five years, our last governor made it so that it used to be you had to major in, let's say, history. And then you could minor in teacher education. He changed it. And so now you can major in education and then minor in agriculture or history or any of those components that we have. Yeah. So you like to do ag program? We have a great ag club. It is, it is always doing something. They're doing a paint the field or paint the... No, they already did that. They did they that did already? That last, I think it was last week. They okay. Did, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, with our ad program, one, one good thing about Ferrum College, uh, with our ad program especially, and I'm a, I might be a little biased to the ad program because I'm working with them over the you know, past several years. In terms of clubs and organizations, the ad club, uh, the ad, uh, club and the Collegiate Young Farmers have been one of our more consistent organizations. Uh, but also, like, uh, another thing with our ad program, you know, we are, like, for a small school, one of the only small schools that has two Working farms. farms. So, you know, we have the Blue Ridge Institute Museum Farm, um, and we also have the Titmus Agriculture Center, which is where the ag, you know, agriculture students and stuff work I love. Uh, the ag program is, is hands on, so I know a lot of students uh, want to know, you know, what are we doing? And, and, and it is very hands on mm -hmm. from raising the lambs, the sheep, to raising, they're doing the growing shows mm -hmm. with the with the cows and, and, and everything. So it is very hands on. So once um, Dr. Brubaker or whoever, Dr. Brubaker, mm -hmm. once she kind of gives you the go ahead, it's all on you. So uh, late night when uh, the animal is sick or whatever, it's up to you to go take care of the animal. So it's definitely, it's like raising a baby, kind of like mm -hmm. somewhat, but yeah. raising an animal and it's your own. And, and so that valuable experience is, is, is way more valuable than, you know, um, or connecting it with what you learn in the classroom and putting the hands on is way much more valuable. Um, also with the ag program, we do 
work a lot with Virginia State University and with uh, Virginia Tech. So we do a lot of coalitions and stuff together with uh, those two institutions. Um, of course, you know, Virginia Tech, they have everything, but like uh, Virginia State, they only have just the, uh, they have a nice greenhouse. But, you know, we have uh, both, the best of both. Mm -hmm. um, at FAM. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, speaking of uh, becoming an ag teacher, a lot of people in the ag program have gone on to become ag teachers all over the state. Um, when I went to the FFA convention in June, uh, the state convention, it was amazing. Like all the people, all the teachers, they looked like they were from FAM. Uh, it was mm -hmm. a good portion of them. And recent graduates, mm -hmm. I say recent, like within the past, 10, 15 years, uh, but which which was amazing. So that kind of gives you, you know, idea about that ads program. Well, Dr. Brubaker is my neighbor. Oh, oh, very cool. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. What other questions about any other programs about, yeah. Do you have competitive cheerleading? They do some competitions. Yeah. Okay. They do some competitions. I'm not sure how competitive you're wanting or looking at, but they do have some. Well, no, last year they went, they, I don't know, they went somewhere last year. And, and they won. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now they the competition. I'm trying to think of a better word. Yeah. You know, they might like kill the competition. I ain't want to say that, but yeah. Yeah. Now they the competition. Mm hmm. And then, you know, another thing was the cheerleaders. Uh, I had the opportunity, you know, i never been a cheerleader, but like I saw them at practice one time, and they put me on top. Like they put me on top of the pyramid. It was a struggle, but we made it happen. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> I got no video. Oh my God, yeah. I, need, I need to see that video. Yeah, it was I want to see that video. I was nervous. <laughs> yep. <laughs> any, any other questions or anything? So does everybody know what they want to do or have an idea? Because I know constantly in talking with uh, several different people or students who come to school uh, to, to do a tour of Ferrum and, and trying to understand like what they want to do. And, and there are several people who come who don't know what mm -hmm. they want to do. Mm -hmm. And so like something that I can, some advice from an old, oh, I'm sorry. It's all good. I'm put it down because I talk with my hands. Uh, all right, check one, two. All right, so some advice that I can give from an a old man, uh, somewhat, not really, um, is like try to think of something. Think of your hobbies and think of things that you like to do. Like I had somebody who came by the office uh, just this week and they had no idea what they wanted to do. And so, you know, as we went around campus and doing a tour of campus, I'm asking, it was actually a young lady, and I'm asking her, you know, what do you like? Do you like this? Do you like that? And she was like, eh, mm, mm, whatever. So then we got to, um, uh, we started talking about outdoor stuff. And does she like to do uh, different things outdoors? She likes uh, competing mountain biking. She likes uh, uh, like doing like hiking and, and different things like that. Um, and so I was asking her, um, has she thought about doing something um, ecotourism, doing something like that, or even rec leadership? Uh, because it's something that you like to do and it's like what Confucius say, if I do something, what, what, what's the correct quote? Because I'm going to mess it up. If I do something I like, I'll never have to work a day in my life. There it goes. So like if you do something that you like, you're not going to be working. You're not going to consider it as work. You're going to consider it as a hobby that you're getting paid to do something. Like you're getting paid to do your hobby, right? So like just think of things and concepts of what you like to do. And so I gave her that information and like she really lit up when she got the information. Uh, other, other students who have came by have talked about they like sports, uh, whether, you know, whether it's they like working out or uh, they like being competitive or, or whatever it may be. And, you know, they say they want to go on to professional sports, which is good too, but you can't compete professionally for the rest of your life, right? So what do you have outside of that? You know, you look at, but you still want to be connected to athletics or whatever sport it is of your choice. So just looking at, maybe I want to be um, 
go into sports management. Maybe I want to be an agent. Maybe I want to be uh, a trainer. Or maybe I want to be whatever it is under that umbrella. So you're thinking of something that, that you like to do, something that's a hobby that you enjoy, and you're trying to in incorporate it into a major. And, 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 and the reason why I said that, that is something that uh, I think, Farron, we do a great job at. Because if we don't have the major, we do have this one liberal arts, uh, liberal arts or liberal studies, well, I guess we got both of them, yeah. where you can take those different components and combine them to make make um, whatever it is that you want outside of if we don't have um, said particular major or whatever on campus. So that's an opportunity. So even if even if you're not here at Fairman, you go elsewhere, just think of stuff like that. Just think of what can I do um, that I enjoy, that I can do it for life. So just look at things from that perspective. Is anyone in here looking at FARM as a first or a second choice? Okay, great, mm -hmm. great. great. So what, what interests you so far into FARM? Uh huh? Oh. <laughs> Like yeah, so so what what interests you? What like what what was it about it? Oh, <laughs> like y'all had to be scared. I mean, it's all good, you know. How close it is? How close it is? Location. Ten miles down. Yeah. Education. Education. Let me get your name and email before you leave, okay? I think Miss Wheeler's class did a fair amount of location, and she was trying to send it to you guys, but went to a person who doesn't work here anymore. Okay. 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 Yeah. Check on that. Anybody else? The price. The price. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is very affordable outside of what the uh, the sticker price is, and 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 hopefully <laughs> we can remarket at some point. But uh, and then another thing, like. I don't think I talked about it, which uh, I should have. We also offer the Panther Promise. I don't know if you all are aware of that, but the Panther Promise is uh, if you qualify for um, the, the, you meet the qualifications, then it's free tuition. So we do offer free tuition for Virginia uh, students who are living on campus. So that going back to that affordability type deal. Do y'all offer a criminal justice program? We do. Yes, ma'am. We do. We have a very strong criminal justice program. We've just got uh, two brand new professors just started this uh, semester. We have our own uh, criminal justice house, which they go in and do simulations and investigate crimes. And it's, it's a really cool side of and the cool thing about that house, though, for real, is is we're the only small school with a forensics house on campus, and we also have yeah yeah, and we also have like members from like law enforcement, Virginia State Police, who have came down and complimented the house and said that you know we have some better stuff than what they have in the house. So it just gives you the caliber of what that criminal justice program is. And to be honest with you, criminal justice, uh, give you a little bit of history on criminal justice uh, major. We, and this is way back before y'all, you know, it was even thought of, but like, um, we never had criminal justice on campus, but it was the students who got together who said they wanted to have this major on campus. And shortly thereafter, the major um, did uh, come on campus. It started growing, growing, and growing. And right now, it's one of the most popular programs that we do have on campus and so we are producing a lot of criminal justice majors and they're going out to do great things out in the you know law enforcement or in the criminal justice area we have graduates that are with the FBI with the Secret Service um, that have really been able to go up in ranks uh, when the Queen visited before she died years ago um, he was one of her bodyguards um, so we, so some, our students have done some really big things. All right. Anybody else? Any, anything? They all have three questions each, right? 
three questions each? All right, let's go. All right, let's. So we can just go down the road if you would rather do that. Yeah. What made me want to go to Farrow? What made me want to go to Farrow? All right, so what made me want to go to Farron was uh, my dad worked there, and so like uh, I got like uh, free tuition at the time, uh, so that's what uh, made me want to go to Farron. But that's not what kept me at Farron, though. But uh, in a nutshell, that's what made me want to go to Farron. But then what kept me there is getting involved and uh, seeing like everything that we had to offer uh, there, and yeah, and it was, like I said, it was wonderful. And then of course doing the uh, Disney internship. The crazy thing, I, I, crazy, short story, I try to make it short, on Disney. So I was taking a business communications class at Farron with Dr. Basu. Oh. And uh, I was giving Dr. Basu a hard time in that class because I was like, man, you know, whatever. It's, yeah, I'm not going to learn this or I'm not going to need this or whatever. Um, so in the fall, I took that class um, and finished with the class and, you know, I guess I got an A in it. But then the next semester, I took the semester off and did the Disney internship. And so here I am at Disney World. And I'm, I'm down there working, and uh, I got hooked up with some of the uh, executives with uh, Walt Disney World uh, at the time. And like, I'm just sitting back and I'm listening, and I'm hearing terms and hearing things that I had just learned in class from the semester before. And the reason why I knew it was because it was just still kind of fresh in my mind. And so I remember like every week calling Dr. Basu, <laughs> and he giving me a hard time. Uh, he said, Right, Justin Moose. Moose, moose, you should have right, right. But you gotta know him to understand. But um, uh, really, just talking with him every day and like <laughs> trying to go back to uh, to that business communications class and saying I probably should have paid a little more <laughs> attention in class because it could have definitely helped me more than what it did. Mm -hmm. So that's that transferable skills that taking it from the classroom into the real world. So I saw it happen firsthand, which was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And I chose FARM because they had an accredited social work program. I wanted to be a family therapist and I knew that that was the best way to go about meeting that need. And I stayed at FAIR because I just fell in love with it. The professors, they just, you, you're like a sponge because your professors are so knowledgeable and have such experience and are able to provide you such one-to-one -one interaction that I was like, I would get this anywhere else. I would be lost at UVA or Tech or a bigger school like that. Um, but FAIR gave me that really chance to mm -hmm. excel. And like you get like the professors and stuff like you know we always talk about family and like really and truly on campus I think it is family and I think when you talk to all the different students and stuff on campus especially like our uh, uh, I guess juniors and seniors the sophomores juniors and seniors because they've been there for a while they see that family component I mean it's, it's amazing when you have um, not only your professors, but you have the president of the college who addresses you by name or, or or knows you. She may not know your name, but she knows who you are and what you do. And like you see her, and and you see that it's genuine. Uh, like that is important. Or you see her getting down and dirty, um, working. Like um, we had campus cleanup, and she's getting down and dirty, like planting different plants or shoveling or, or doing stuff like that. Uh, you don't see too many other presidents doing that um, and making it meaningful. You know, they might do it for, uh, you know, a photo opportunity, but she's genuine. So that's that's another thing. Is the family college only eligible to those who live on campus? Yes, but there is something else, and I'm not... Uh, there is something for commuters. Um, I'm not, not not for sure what it's called, but it's something that's compatible to what the Panther Promise is. Because uh, I guess initially when we came out with the Panther Promise, we was thinking about residential students, but uh, there's quite a few uh, commuter students who um, you know wanted to have something similar or whatever, and so they did create something uh, for the commuters. I'm not for sure what it's called, but it is something compatible. With the special ed classes that you do, would that be enough to be able to get a job both as the elementary school teacher and the special ed elementary school teacher? Or would it be something different? Because I know it's smarter to get yourself in a market boy than Check with 
me at lunch. I'm going to find out the answer to that because I'm not positive. But I will let um, your teachers know that that answer. I will text right now. Yes, sir. Um, so the certifications you need to become a private practice therapist. Yes. Well, therapist. Yes. Um, can you all help like students get those? Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. So one of the things that that's if that's what your goal is then you definitely might want to look at the 3-1 that we have with University of Pikeville, where you get your BSW in three years and your master's in one year. And then what you do is you do supervision. So let's say you work at a community service board for a couple of years and you get supervision, then you take the state test. I am a supervisor, um, so I've helped eight people get licensed now. And so it's um, it's a long process, but it is it's so doable. So at the fair, how many years do you think it would take before you can have one of pages from a five minutes? You could you could get your degree in three years, get your master's, two years of supervision, and five years you could be an LCSW, hang up your private practice shingle and bill insurance companies and roll with it. Absolutely. All right. Other questions? Everybody had three questions, so that's like Come on. 100 questions. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, there's a lot of people You know, we are a small, strong program. So the most we usually have is um, 10 to 12. Right now I have four seniors and I have eight coming up for next year. So, and with our mental health crisis that we're in, we're projecting that that's gonna become larger. Yes, sir. So many people take your cybersecurity program? Yes, we have, um, gosh, I don't know how many majors we've got in cybersecurity. Oh, I don't have that um, number. I don't have that number, but we, yeah, it's a good program. That and computer science is good stuff. I know, I know it is one of the ones that people come in trying to get involved with um, computer technology or well, computer information systems. I know that's one that has been popular from a mission, from a mission standpoint this year. Yes. Um, how is your graphic design I don't know much about the graphic about design. It. I don't know much yeah. about it because it's a fairly new major. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Just being honest. Yeah. Call fair though. Who's that? Tell me about your major. Is that Jake? Is it Jake? Is it he? I think it's Jake Smith. Jake Smith. That's him. <laughs> Any other questions? What is like the day-to-day -day college like? your schedule, like how would that be so? Oh, it's amazing. You know, because you may have class on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 8, at 10, at 1, and 2, and have an 11 o'clock class on Tuesday, Thursday. It is not like you come to high school and you're sitting through classes from 8 to 3. Now, the older that you get, well, I won't say the older that you get, but the more advanced that you get through college, you can almost kind of cater your schedule because you you get the you get the opportunity to kind of get classes first before everyone else. So it's harder as a newer student versus a well-seasoned student. Um, just to give you an idea about remembering back, you know, two years ago when I was in school, um, what my schedule looked like. So. Um, I took a heavy load, and I'm, I'm gonna go back to after I got back from Disney. I took a heavy load coming back my first semester back that fall semester. So I had like four or five classes back to back on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, and then only had like I think two classes on Tuesday and Thursdays. But then for uh, the next three semesters, only had classes on Tuesday and Thursdays. So I always had a four day weekend. So um, and then a day off in the middle. So I. Used Use the opportunity to get homework done or hang out with friends. Play a little bit. Play a little bit or work. So it, it, it definitely worked out. Um, but 
the classes on Tuesday and Thursdays are a little bit longer. So they were long days. I started at 9.30 and I think I was done by like two, whatever. They changed the schedule. They added like five minutes or something to the class schedule. So I think it was like 2.15 or something when I finished up at the time and had like a hour for lunch. But I didn't have any classes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I was, I was chilling. It was great. Lovely. <laughs> I know one semester there, and they don't do this now, but we used to have a lot of night classes. And so I know one semester I have class on I have class on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night from 6:45 to 9 o'clock. My days were completely free. I had all my classes were at night. It was insane. <laughs> And, like, you know, we, we, we do have an attendance policy on campus. Uh, you have to attend at least 75% of your classes. Uh, however, professors, uh, they can, you know, make it more strict if they want to, but 75% is, is the uh, line that you have to attend. So it, it's up to you to attend those classes and make sure you make those classes because, like I was saying, you know, we're trying to uh, help you become young adults. So, like, if you, even if you have an A in the class and you missed that one class over, then you failed the class. So, it's up to you to kind of, you know, stay on it and be responsible, regardless of what your grade is inside the, the, the class. Yes? How is it economics and, like, business? All right. Okay, so so business is, is another one of our top three programs. So our just our top three programs on campus: criminal justice, health and human performance, and business. So in terms of business uh, and, and econ, business is, is one of those programs that is a strong program. I'm a strong advocate of the business program because I'm part of that program. I graduated with sports management um, within the business program. So it is a program we do have. Of, um, a groups inside within the program Enactus, which is um, a group that you can join. You, uh, do you still get credit for doing Enactus? I don't know if you still oh, get credit. They cre haven't offered Enactus in the last couple years. Okay. But one of the things they do in, through accounting and business is they do the VITA tax program, Volunteer Income Tax. Uh, I can't remember what the A stands for. Yeah. Um, but students actually learn how to fill out income taxes and will do income taxes for the community and for college students. Yeah, for free. For free. Mm hmm Because we work with Step Incorporated to do that. Did you play football there? See uh, about that. Uh, see, uh, see. Uh, the short answer is no, but that's the story behind it. I was there for one day and I didn't make it. Yeah, we had to run one tens and I ran four and ran home. Like two stars. Two stars, two stars. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, I play intramural football. Does that count? Intramural football? Okay. All right. Yes, sir. How's the football season going? So far, so good. Yeah. Two and one. Two and one. Yeah. And there's a game this This Saturday, Saturday yep. Shenandoah. Yeah. They they pretty tough. Pretty tough. Yeah, they just had they just had a young lady. Y'all heard uh, oh. Voorhees? Uh, what's her name? Voorhees or whatever? Who plays? She made history. Yes. Kicker. No, not the not kicker. kicker. Uh, she was a tight end. Uh, the, no, safety. She's safety, and they got like the quarterback rush or whatever. So she was on like. She was on the Today Show. Everything, everything this week. So. For Shannon Doyle, yeah. She's been playing. This is her third year. She's been playing on the team since her freshman year. And so she finally got some burn in the game this week or last week. And showed out. And showed out, yeah. She showed her hind pots. I hope she don't show them on Saturday against us, but, you know, she does, you know, good for her. But transator, man, you know what I'm saying? She breaking barriers. And then, of course, she had the kicker uh, from, uh, what's the other kicker from who played the other day? Yeah. Anybody else? 
Huh? I'll he, he'll work on us. He'll work on us. He, he'll start. He's starting. He's starting. And he's uh, he he got some stats on him. I don't think he has any touchdowns just yet. But like in terms of uh, in terms of rushing, he good. He good. We got we got quite a few of Franklin County players on the team this year. Big Will Harrison. This is senior year. He he's uh. He, he's doing pretty good too. He, he's he's going to get some awards this year. Watch him. Anything else? If you know someone, can you room with them? If you, yes, you can room with them. We so we have we have. Uh, uh, several different ways or two different ways that we use to uh, do roommates. So if you have somebody that you want to room with, you can uh, contact our Res Life uh, uh, department and say you want to room with such and such. Now, if you don't have a roommate and you just, you know, just want to pick whoever, we have this thing called Please Don't Snore, which is like it's like a, uh, it's a matchmaking app. So it's like, just think of uh, uh, <laughs> Just think of Tinder, but like it's for like uh, your roommates. Yeah, it's yeah. So like, so like, so you put things that you like or don't like, and they match you up. You swipe left or swipe right, and bam, that's there you go. That's your roommate, or they get connected. So please don't snore, and please don't snore neither. But you know, see what I did. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Are freshmen required to live on campus? No. Freshmen aren't are not required to live on campus. Now we are residential we are a residential campus, so uh, most students do stay on campus, but if you uh, live within that certain radius, six I think it was sixty, fifty, sixty miles, then you can uh, become a, a commuter. Next question. What if you start off as a computer? Can you like change and live on campus? Yes, yes. We can definitely make that happen. Yeah. But why would you want to like so here, here, here's, here's, here's my advice. Here's my advice in terms of uh, determining whether to be a commuter or stay on campus. Um, I'm a strong advocate for staying on campus, at least your freshman and possibly your sophomore year. And the reason why I'm a strong advocate for that is because like there's a lot of things that happens like, um, it's gonna sound bad. It happens inside the dorms, but like it, it's all about growing. It's all about having those friendships and creating those friendships with uh, your your hallmates, your roommates, and stuff like that. You're also growing together, so you're going through a grind or a whatever together with your um, roommate and hallmates. So like it's, it's it's very important. And then of course like with uh, some of the, the the different activities are not necessarily the activities, but um, uh, programs that you may be required to attend like after hours uh, whether it's like a guest speaker or or whatever program that you may be required to attend, it definitely makes it a lot easier staying on campus. So I'm a strong advocate mainly for the relationships of staying on campus at least your your freshman year, possibly your sophomore year before moving off campus or commuting. That's just me, but it's, it's a preference. You think you know yourself pretty well until you live with somebody. Yeah. And there's a lot of, of learning and whatnot that, that happens when you have a roommate. I'm all for the don't room with your friend. Yeah. Because you can ruin your friendship by living together. <laughs> yes, you can. Um, but if, if you can possibly stay on campus, I highly encourage you to do so, at least that first year. How many people have their own room at home? Everybody, so you don't share it with a brother or sister. It's your own room or whatever. So imagine you're in your own space. You got your own room or whatever now, and now you're going to uh, a campus, and then you got to share everything. So I mean, there's going to be some good days, and there's going to be some bad days. I mean, you're going to have like the honeymoon period where you know everything is all fun and games and stuff. But then after about a month in, it's like you you start picking out the little things, and that's when you start 
start learning things about yourself, but also your roommate or whatever. And then that comes with some conflict resolutions because within the residence halls, you know, we have RAs. And so if there's uh, roommate issues, you know, you sign an agreement. Well, how we do it, you know, at Ferrum, you sign an agreement, a roommate agreement. And so now you go have like a meeting with your RA with your roommate to kind of hash that out and see, you know, where you can come to a, you know, an equal medium. And if you still can't work things out, then we can look at, you know, getting another room or switching out or another roommate or something like that. But it's definitely like a learning experience, especially within that conflict resolution piece. Any of the fees that we saw online that you can include, like, meal plans or anything for them to have, like, access to the cafeteria? So room and board, room and board, uh, which is part of like the thirteen to fifteen thousand dollars. Like tuition is around, uh, I think thirty-seven four uh, is what tuition is, and then you tack on the depending on where you live at thirteen to fifteen thousand dollars. So within that room and board piece for the residential students, that's included. The meal plans are included with that, and so what our meal plan, our standard meal plan includes fifteen and two hundred sixty dollars. So you get. 15 meals, 15 meals a week, and $260 for the semester. So um, with the um, 15 meals, that's just a swipe going into the dining hall or going into our Panther store where you can get a grab-and-go sandwich, salad, or whatever. So that'll count as one of the 15 uh, meals. Uh, the $260 is just same as cash that you can use at Subway, uh, Pizzeria on campus, or the Starbucks that we have on campus. So. Uh, uh, once you lose, once you use all your uh, your Panther bucks, that two hundred sixty dollars, then you're done. But you can add more money on to to that. Right, ramen is a popular. I've not touched ramen since fair. I'm proud to say it's been thirty years. I never ate ramen. The reason I'm asking is some. I don't know if everybody understands. Like some colleges don't offer meal plans. Right, they have students outside of campus and they bring them in. Oh wow. Don't have, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. Right? yeah. How is the food? I personally like it. Now I was a student back in the eighties and it was nasty. So I think the food is pretty good. There are so many varieties in the cafeteria now. Yeah. You know, when I was a student, you got eggs one way, a piece of toast, you had about three things what? of cereal you got to choose from in a bagel. And that was breakfast. What? Now it is this huge smorgasbord. I mean, they make omelets every morning. <laughs> you get you a custom made omelet or you get you a Belgian waffle. Like, you get you some biscuits and gravy, it's bacon, fun. sausage, or whatever. Like, the breakfast is hit. Like, breakfast is on, on point. I'm going to tell you that. Yeah. Lunch and dinner? It all depends on what you like. You know, it is a dining hall, so it is hit and, hit and miss, but for the most part, they're pretty good. Pretty good um, dining hall. Uh, but we also have, like, the other uh, eateries, Subway, Pizzeria, and then also um, in the, uh, uh, the Panther Grounds, where you can get something to eat. But uh, breakfast? Breakfast, nobody will complain about breakfast. Uh, there's a line to the omelet station every morning. Like, so people get there early so they can get that omelet. For real. What about athletes? Do they get any extra food or anything? No, they get the same uh, as everybody else. <laughs> Right. <laughs> no, but but it's all you can eat. Well, if you're eating in a dining hall, it is all you can eat. So uh, we do have that buffet style. Um, Subway and the piece, I mean, you know, you get what you pay for, but the dining hall is all you can eat. How much is like what? Uh, Dinner's like nine. They, they changed, they went up. I think it's like 10. I think it's like 10 or 11, something like that. Then on Friday, we got we got people like fish up in here, fried fish. They do they do fish fry Fridays. Yeah, man, get you that get you that hot fish and that hot grease. Jones delicious, for real. Look, I I slobbed a little bit. I ain't mean to, but that ain't, that ain't delicious. Yes, but we do get a lot of community people, especially on Fridays, that uh, visit the dining hall for the fish Fridays. Um, 
um, really it's more, I think it's more community people yeah. there on Fridays than during um, the rest, the students on Fridays. Now, uh, this Friday for the public? Yeah. Yeah. For public and students. Yeah. Well, really, a whole dining hall is for public. I mean, anybody can come at any time that we're open. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, y'all need come. Y'all need come for breakfast though, for real. I'm trying to yeah, tell you. Come for breakfast. Dun, 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 dun. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm not telling you skip school to come to breakfast, but I mean, I'm saying, no, nah, I'm not telling you that. Don't oh, don't test them. <laughs> no, nah, don't do that. Stay in school. Come on Saturday morning. We got brunch. Yeah. Yeah, we do. That's good. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> Campus security. We have a full-fledged police force on campus. Um, they are they're, they're a great bunch of guys. They yeah. want to be your friends. They don't want to have to be the heavy-handed, but um, they definitely can do it when it is needed. Yeah. Um, so we have a fully functioning police yeah. department. They're all about the community policing. So, like, they do their rounds. Uh, they try to get to know you, know who's on campus, who's not on campus. So, uh, because if they know you, you know, if something was to happen, they can tell if uh, you're supposed to be there or somebody who's not supposed to be there, they know which is which. And so that's... Um, a key component of the uh, community policing uh, that we offer. I mean, we are a quasi um, uh, a campus. I mean, um, things you know happen, but like I, I think we have we do a great job of minimal, uh, minimalizing the stuff that do happen on campus because of uh, the campus security and campus police that we have on campus.